Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss equivalence. In this video, we will define the topic of equivalence, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of equivalence falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. Money today does not have the same value as money at some point in the future. Perhaps over a short period of time we can add up the various sums of money and accept the net results. However, this does not work over a longer period of time. To illustrate this, pretend that someone said that you could have $200 today or $200 in three years. Which would you rather have? This shows how money at different times may be equivalent in magnitude, but certainly doesn't mean that it is accept acceptably equivalent. For this reason, we need to establish substitutes that we can accept, making two unique scenarios, now or later, equivalent. So let's discuss the general workflow. The concept of equivalence is used throughout the works of engineering economics to compare alternatives. When working equivalence problems on the exam, we may be presented with a single or multiple cash flow scenarios. When analyzing these scenarios, we will have established equivalency when our conclusion maintains the same overall fiscal effect as the original distribution. Our first step to solving an equivalence problem is to determine the identity of each transaction in the cash flow distribution. For each transaction, we need to define, number one, where it occurs in the lifespan of the distribution, number two, whether it is an expense or credit, and remember they could be called disbursements, payments, revenues, etc., but they're all the same, a plus or a minus. And number three, the magnitude. In, most, in the most elementary form, the analysis of these alternatives in each transaction can be summarized in a simple table. So let's run through a quick example. A buddy comes to you and asks you to invest $15,000 into their tech startup. They say that they will repay you $18,000 in four years. Assume that you have the money, but you are unsure whether it would make sense economically based off what you can get in return on a four-year investment in your local bank's money market, which is currently paying 5% annual return. What will the difference in cash flow be after four years if you choose to invest at the bank versus investing in your buddy's startup? Now let's go through the solution. Equivalence can be used to compare alternatives occurring at different times with a goal of, of determining which has the largest potential for profit. The fiscal impact of the first alternative is already defined, and that is it to invest $15,000 now, today, to receive $18,000 in the future. The second alternative is to invest $15,000 now and receive 5% annual return on the balance in the money market over the four years. The fiscal effects are not known for this alternative, so we must determine the equivalent balance in the money market after four years so we can determine which alternative is in our best interests. So let's illustrate the equivalence of this alternative using a table. So in the first column, we will illustrate the year. Our second column will represent our principal. And the third column, let's call that the interest. 
So in year one, we right now we put $15,000 into our bank, into our money market. And at the end of that year, we know we will get 5% annual return. That will be our interest. So 5% five, 5 of 15000 is $750. So we add that to our principal going into year two, which is $15,750. Once again, the interest at the end of that year will be 5% of the balance or the principal, which is $787.50. Add that to the principal going into year three and we have $16,537.50. Our interest on that balance would be $826.88. Add that to the principal in the fourth year, which is $17,364.38. And our interest on that balance would be $868.22. So we started with a value of $15,000 and we see our principal has grown uh, to a final value of $18,234. Now it is important to note that the interest at the end of each year is rolled into the principal going into the new year. So taking $15,000 now and investing it in a money market at 5% annual return will yield an equivalent balance of $18,234 at the end of four years. Therefore, the delta between this payment and your buddy's offer is delta is equal to the equivalent bank payment minus your buddy's offer, which is $18,234 minus $18,000, which gives us a difference of $234. Comparing this equivalent payment from the bank to your buddy's offer shows that you will be losing money if you decided to invest it in your buddy's business. Therefore, you are better off investing your money into the bank. So here's a little side note though. If this was a real life scenario, personally, I would take the loss of investing in my buddy's startup of $234 because quite frankly, it's not worth a friendship for that, for that amount of money. But that's a personal call. So that's it. That's pretty much it for equivalence problems. But there are a few common ways individuals will trip up on a problem like this. Uh, this particular problem asks that you compare taking the investment at the bank versus taking your buddy's offer. Therefore, you are subtracting your buddy's offer of $18,000 from the equivalent four-year bank payment to determine whether or not you would be making money. During the exam, external pressures may cause you to flip this and subtract the equivalent four-year bank payment from your buddy's offer of $18,000. This would actually show that you would be losing money if you invested in the bank, which is obviously wrong. But the chances that this answer is on the exam as a option is definitely high. So watch out for that. Another common mistake would be to simply multiply the interest rate on the $15,000 and add it four times for each year. This would understate the actual returns over the four-year period and throw off the comparison. It is important to note that after each year your money is in the bank, interest is incurred. This interest is then rolled into the new principal for the next year. This new principal, which includes the interest from the previous year, will be sub subject to interest again at the end of the year. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.